highest scoring game no, in no, NFL no. history. A, a loss for the Cowboys and a loss which Jerry Jones called a moral victory. But regardless how well they play this weekend, there'll be nothing moral about a loss to their bitter rival, the Redskins, who they've dropped two straight to. The team says they are focused and ready to move past last weekend's loss slash moral victory. When you play the quarterback position, you're going to have good games, you're going to have good plays, and you have to build on those, and then you're going to have some things that don't go your way. You just have to keep coming. And uh, Tony knows that better than anybody else. He's played this position for a long, long time. I think he does that really, really well, both within a game and from game to game. If you don't let it go, it just, it, it's in no one's, um, it doesn't help the football team win the next game because it's really, uh, it always is what you do from now on is, is really what matters. And, I think um, you, know, you have to take that approach throughout every season. It's been going on a long time, even even when I was in college. You know, um, like I said, he's the leader. He's the leader of our football team, and you know, as soon as things, you know, things go right, everybody will be praising him. It was the game of the weekend last week, and heartbreaking loss for the Cowboys. How much of a hangover do you think the boys will have against the Skins, Stephen A. Skip Bayless. <laughs> Stop the presses, buckle up, Skip. Sit back as I talk about this accident waiting to happen that is the Dallas Cowboys. Wait, we already talked Skip about Bayless. Eli, right? Stop He's it. the accident Stop waiting it. to happen. Say, wait, wait a minute, Skip, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got some news for you, Skip. Okay. I hope you're all right. I hope you got your heart medication, Skip. Even though you're in great it. health, you I'm, might, you might need, need some, you, you might need some for this. Okay. Skip Bayless. I have changed my mind. I'm picking the Cowboys to win this game, Skip. <laughs> I'm picking the Cowboys to win this game. What Skip, happened? The accident waiting to happen. Is it your pick. will not be that way to we it will not be that way this weekend. Skip, I got loved ones in DC. They're gonna be mad at me, Skip. They're mad at me right now. But I gotta tell you. I can't pick against the Cowboys for this game. I've thought about it long and hard. I thought about it overnight. I thought about it this morning, and I changed my mind in the last two hours. I'm picking the Cowboys to win this game. Here's why, Skip. Here's why. We all know that the Dallas Cowboys defense is pathetic. We saw what a surgeon Peyton Manning was against this defense. The offense can do the same thing to Washington that it did to Denver because I'm not sold on Washington's defense. Mm -hmm. So it really comes down to Washington's offense and how formidable it can be. Even though I believe that they can put up some points, all right? Is Pierre Garcon and Moss and all of these boys, are they Julius Thomas, Wes Welker, Demarius Thomas, Eric Decker? No. Alfred Morris, he can run the football, he can play, I get all of that. But does he make up or offset the kind of weapons that the Dallas Cowboys had to deal with last week against Denver? No. And then last but not least, can RG3 be Peyton Manning? Nope. Can't do it, Skip. Not yet. Not yet. He doesn't want to run. Doesn't want to run the read option. Obviously, he's formidable, but not the same RG3, even though he might surprise us because they did have a bye week last week. And as a result, he might be getting, might have got some treatment, might be feeling even better, and might be looking to run even more. But Skip, more than anything, they beat the Cowboys twice last year. A third time in a row? Skip, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Had Dallas won one of those games last year or won last week against Denver, I'd have gave Washington a better chance. But because they had the two losses against Washington last year, combined with the fact that they lost last week to Denver, I cannot imagine that that offense is going to all of a sudden fold like a cheap tent against that paper defense known as the Washington Redskins. I'm rolling with the Big D, the boys in Big D. Dallas 31, Redskins 27. Cassidy can attest to this. I, I am truly shocked by this pick because just a little background. Look at his face. He's know, giddy. He's, he's giddy. <laughs> just a little background for our viewers out there. We have a yeah. pre-show meeting every morning. We do not give away any of our arguments, but we do need to know 
just basically which way are we going to go on the topics. So I asked Stephen A this morning, early this morning, what was it, about 7.45? Mm -hmm. Which way you are you going? You got to give them the time. Well, <laughs> well go ahead. you weren't awake yet, but it was okay. And <laughs> right out of the box, you said, I, I got to go with Washington, just for the record. Yeah. And I yeah. shrugged and said, well, for those who think we trick up these debates, I said, well, we're just going to agree on this one because I'm definitely going to stick with my preseason pick to win the NFC East, the Washington Redskins. Now, you know that you have switched to a team that you did say a couple of weeks ago would make the playoffs, your Dallas Cowboys. And I, I will also remind our viewers, you, you're on the right side of this one because Dallas is favored at home by five and a half over the so far woeful Washington Redskins. So I'm the one out on the limb once again with this pick. I'm going to stick with the Redskins. My gut feeling is there's no way the Redskins can be this bad as we've seen them be to this point. And there's no way that the Cowboys are that good because the harder I look at what Dallas has done so far, the less I see. So big picture, I'm, I'm gonna say this is the game coming off the bye week that is liftoff for RG3 and company. And I believe that Romo and company, instead of lifting off, will be let down by what happened in 51 to 48 when Tony Romo played sensationally, then obviously threw away the entire effort with one late pass, ball game. Thank you very much. See you later, Peyton Manning. Now, Stephen A., the Washington defense cannot be the unrecognizable eyesore that it has been so far. When Washington has fallen behind early in the, some of the three of the first four games, 33 to seven, 31 to nothing, and 14 to nothing, boom, boom, boom. They're just out of the game almost instantly. That's the same defense basically, plus a Rackpo added from last year, that last year took the Redskins on a late run. They won seven straight games and won the division. They can't be this bad. It had to get fixed over the bye week. And furthermore, I told you two days ago on this show that I gave Robert Griffin a four-game grace period because he played zero in the, the four preseason games. So, Robert, you're on. It's your time now. Here you go. It's time to lift off. I would like to see you, Robert, run a little bit of read option, just a little bit, work it in just to keep him off balance. You say you don't want to do it anymore. Okay, so calling you out, RG3. Show me you're every bit the Peyton Manning of a pocket passer that you say you can be against a defense that in the last two weeks has allowed 401 passing yards to Phillip Rivers and 414 to Peyton Manning. And need I remind us, Eli threw for 450 against his defense. That's three 400 plus yards passers, Robert. You got to at least give me 350 Sunday night at Jerry World. And again, back to my point, Stephen A. What has Dallas really done this year? Well, you remember the Giants game. We both agreed. It looked like Eli had brought them all, all the way back and was going to win the game. And then, whammo, a late pick six by Eli. And then the loss at Kansas City. Romo disappeared in the fourth quarter, but did throw one beautiful bomb, and Des dropped it. The loss at San Diego. Romo was nowhere to be found. So they got one thing to go for, one thing to, to hang their helmet on so far. That is, they dominated the St. Louis Rams at Jerry World. The same Rams who late in the game last week at home led the Jacksonville Jaguars 27 to 20, those Rams. That's all I see so far from my Dallas Cowboys. I'm sorry, I'm going RG3. I'm going fairly high scoring here. I'm gonna go 35-31. Redskins, another quasi shootout at Jerry World. You're so emotional sometimes. You really, really are. Because that's what this picture is about. Somebody's got to be on this show. You, 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 you're, uh, somebody's got to be emotional? Yes. Really? There's a shortage of emotion? Okay, I can go with that. But here's the deal, Skip Bayless. I'm here for you. 
because I know what this is about. This is about not just your pick. This is about your love and affection for RG3 and the fact okay. that you just want to believe, you want to hold on to the belief that somehow, some way, he's going to give back to being the RG3 of old. You think he's been brainwashed? You think he's been contaminated? You think he's been hoodwinked and bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and you cannot get over it, Skip? But it has happened. It has happened, Skip. The RG3 that you knew is not here right now. I'm not saying he's done. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm not saying he's not going to return to the RG3 of, oh, maybe, just maybe, Skip, it'll be a loss to the Cowboys that will get him back to the RG3 that he needs to be. Maybe, just maybe, Skip, this is exactly what he needs to be the stud that we know him to be. I'm still not ruling out the Redskins winning the division, okay? I'm just saying they're going to lose Sunday. It's just going to happen, Skip. I want you to brace yourself for this because it's a very thing. Uh, listen, it's very hard for me to make this pick. Come on, man. It's me picking the Cowboys, okay? But, Skip, it's just inevitable. You can see it. This defense, I mean, please, rank 27th, rank dead last in yards allowed, rank 28th against the pass. All of a sudden, with Des Bryant and Jason Witten and those boys, Terrence Williams emerging. By the way, Miles Austin coming back. You still got Romo. DeMarco Murray is trying to act like he's really a running back that can catch passes out of the backfield now, too. And you're telling me that you think the Washington Redskins are all of a sudden going to be ready for this game? I understand they had to buy a week. I understand they're a bit rested. I understand they're a bit fresh. I get all of that. I understand it. But with the Dallas Cowboys, if they are healthy, I can't see them losing this game. Not the way I've been watching them play. Can't see it, Skip. Can't now, see it. But I am being objective. You are being a bit emotional. But I'm here for you. I'm now, here. allow me to psychoanalyze you your... You need a hug? No, you need a hug because <laughs> you are the one who have re has reversed field here. And why, casting yeah, has that happened? because Stephen A. woke up between our meeting and the real show, and he realized that he is the one who went out on the limb before the draft two years ago and said Andrew Luck would be a better quarterback than RG3. I'm standing by my man, RG3. So Stephen A. realizes he needs RG3 to stick it up this Sunday night on national TV so that he Skip. can gloat on Monday. Skip. See, Skip. I told you so. Andrew Skip. Luck is the man. That's what Skip, happened. That's get, what just happened right me. here. Skip, Skip, you get on me for following politics. You should run for office. Look at your double talking, sniveling no. self. Look, I just you got to give word. it to Stephen A. Hold, I hold, nailed hold, it. Hold, hold, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Skip. Wait a minute, Skip. I didn't sit there and say Andrew Luck, and we all know I'm just playing with you with the sniveling stuff all the producers here. Watch your mouth. Mind y'all business. I'm talking to Skip here. Here's the deal, Skip. We all know that I didn't say necessarily that Andrew Luck was going to be better. I said he was worthy of being the number one overall pick ahead of RG3, and I threw That's out a bevy of right. reasons why. Indianapolis, as opposed to Chocolate City, succeeding Peyton Manning, conventional quarterback. Oh, I, brought, I threw all of those things into the equation. Don't twist my words. That's number no, one. I'm number two. Your words. Number two. Da, 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 no, 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 you're not. No, you're not. You're misquoting me like the politician, <laughs> the closet politician you are. Not number me. two, Skip. Number two, and more importantly, let's look at this thing for what it is. The fact is, is that if you look at RG3, he hasn't been the same. You're trying to hold on to it, hoping to get that dude back. They're not listening to you, Skip. They should. They really should. They really should. But then you got to give him this. Uh, when he changes his mind, Skip, mm -hmm. uh, he changes it all. All, all the way. All the way. <laughs> all the way. He's and, committed to it. Hey, uh, yeah. Hey, I respect hey. it. But it's, just, it's just for the week. <laughs> it's just for the week. And last quick so, point. Last quick point. Stephen A., I am too honest to be a politician, and you know it. Mm. Yeah, we'll that is true. That. <laughs> too rigid, too. Too rigid, too. No, honest. Yes. Uh, we'll, oh, yes. We'll expand You're more on the RG3 discussion yep. later in the show. But coming up, 